Hey, I'm Carly from Wix Studio. In this lesson, we're going to get you started with sections and elements in the Studio Editor. Let's dive right in. First things first, let's cover some of the basics you need to know to get started. Whenever you add a new section to your page, it'll automatically be set to scale proportionally. And many of the elements you add are also set to scale proportionally. That means many of the designs you create for desktop screens will automatically scale down to tablet and mobile sizes, also known as breakpoints, so you can start with a functional foundation and optimize your design from there. If you'd prefer a different responsive behavior for your design, you can always change it later. We'll explore all the options in this course. But here's a key tip. When you focus on designing for desktop breakpoint first, your designs will naturally cascade down to the lower breakpoints. So you can focus on desktop first, then edit in the tablet and mobile breakpoints later on to make sure your designs look good on every screen size. I'll walk you through building a section in the editor and show you how proportional scaling default can help you in your design process. First, let's take a look at the hierarchy of a page. All websites are made up of containers within containers within containers. You have your entire page, which can be broken down into sections, container boxes, and individual elements. The section is your largest container. Within this section, you've got this stack, which is a child of the section, and the section is its parent. Then this text is a child of the stack. Remember, parent elements properties like size and position can influence the properties of their children. Now let's go back and start from a blank canvas so you can see how to get the most control over the editor and its tools. To put together your hero section, drag and drop the elements you want right onto your page. You can put them anywhere in your section and refine their exact position relative to their parent with the X and Y coordinates here in the inspector. They represent the element's distance from the top left corner of their parent element. In this case, the section. Once you drag another element, like this text, inside the container, its X and Y measurements will change according to the new parent, which is now the container. If the parent is the container and you decide to move it, the rest of its elements will move with it. You can also quickly align your elements horizontally and vertically to the center of their parent container using the snapping guidelines here. And do the same with the entire container relative to its parent section. So now the structure of your site is a page with a section with a container with some text. Now any sections we add after that will be laid out one after another on the page. You can see them all and the elements nested in each of them right here in the Layers panel. Once you have a few sections set up on your page, you can swap their positions by dragging it up or down right in the Layers panel. And to delete a section, hit Delete. First, let's design a container with the text inside. We'll adjust the size and position of the elements by moving them right on the canvas, then add an image and resize it. Since all these elements are set to scale proportionally, when users view your site on different screen sizes and a container shrinks, the elements inside will shrink in proportion to it. In the Studio Editor, if you resize a container, the elements within it will keep whatever sizes you set for them. Keep in mind that does mean when you resize a container, its elements might move around. So if you want to resize a parent element without affecting anything inside it, you can press Command or Control while resizing it and they'll stay the same, like this. Just like the other elements on your page, containers will scale proportionally, and they also have a bunch of other responsive behaviors you can play around with. Let's take a look at some of them, like relative width, where the container width is scaling, but the height stays the same. Fixed. The size of the container stays the same as we resize the screen. And stretch. Elements fill their parent container. Just pick the one that looks best for your design. For many of these, you may not see the change in the studio editor, but you'll see the behavior change when you use the resize handles or when the screen size changes in your live site. For now, we'll keep the default, scale proportionally. 
Then, once you have your structure, you can change any design properties on your section container that you'd like. Let's cover how responsive behaviors work in the Studio Editor. So how does the Studio Editor scale elements proportionally if they're all measured in pixels? When you see a pixel value with an asterisk next to it, what you're really seeing is a pixel on canvas value. Basically, Wix Studio makes sure your content behaves the way you want on every screen size. That number is a representation of the current pixel value of your element at this canvas size, but that number will change if you resize your canvas. This gives you the freedom to design your site quickly and visually using pixels on canvas, rather than thinking about all of those different measurement units along the way. Then, when you publish your site, your elements will show based on the responsive behaviors you chose for them. And even though elements can scale proportionally by default, this dropdown gives you some more responsive behaviors to choose from with options based on common breakpoint behaviors. The behaviors you set on desktop will be reflected on every smaller breakpoint, but you can also move down to each smaller breakpoint to set their own behaviors that won't affect any larger ones. That's called the cascading rule, and it lets you tailor your design properties on each breakpoint in the Studio Editor. We can change the design on mobile here too, adjust the elements and section size, then the design will be different here, but it won't change on larger breakpoints. We'll talk about adjusting per breakpoint more throughout the rest of this course. Another option is to turn on the advanced sizing option by clicking this icon in the inspector. Toggling this on switches the sizing view to advanced sizing, exposing all the complex measurement units and tools on that specific element. Changing this view only affects the current element, and other elements will stay in the default view unless you change them. But again, the default view calculates all of your measurements in the background for you and repeats them as their current pixel value on the canvas. Switching the toggle to advanced sizing view doesn't change the responsive behavior. It just reveals all the exact measurements. We'll cover a few situations where you might want to toggle to advanced sizing in another lesson. We cover the structure of a page and adding and adjusting elements on it. In our next lesson, we'll talk text, images, and other elements you can use to start customizing those sections. I'll see you there.